students are you planning on attending your graduate school overseas you need to be familiar with the three letter word g r e what is a g r e is it a new slang for the color green or is it a new species well this is gauri and i'm here with a new informative session for you today and today's topic is about the graduate record examination test also known as a GRE we will be covering a number of important related topics to this test today let me welcome rohan our acc GRE expert who has more than 15 years of work experience and has taught more than 10000 students most of his students have had a consistent score of 320 plus hi rohan can you briefly introduce yourself and share your background in the GRE preparation yeah thank you uh so i've been in the education abroad industry for more than a decade now and uh, majority of my work has been around preparing students on the gre test uh i have particularly focused on devising strategies that can help students score well on the test of course but more importantly ensuring that they are not missing out on the time and apart from that i've also ensure that i give a customized study plan to each student based on the capability of a student so that has been more majority of my work when it comes to the gre so just to understand the gre test a little bit more what are the key sections of the gre and how is the test structured well if you look at the overall gre test uh, you could sort of divide the entire test into three parts one as we call it the awa is basically the analytical writing assessment it's a writing section but you're supposed to analyze a given topic before you start writing on it comprehensively uh the score scale is a 0 to 6 where basically 0 is the minimum you will get and 6 is the maximum with a 0.5 increment and when it comes to the other two sections the verbal reasoning section and the quant reasoning section are separately scored on a scale of 130 to 170 when you combine the two verbal and quant sections it becomes a, a scale, score scale of uh, 260 to 340 where a uh, majority of the times when you ask somebody what's your gre score they end up telling you a score out of 340 but let me tell you that a score out of 340 on its own is not your gre score you should also combine that with the awa score which is scored on a scale of 0 to 6 Could you explain the importance of each section which is contributing to the overall score to the test? Well, if you talk about the significance, I think all the sections are important. Uh AWA serves a different purpose altogether. So, the university admissions committee is looking at the AWA score from a different perspective. So, when you're writing, your response has to have logic in it, it has to have strong reasoning in it. so that plays a different role so the score scale that you get uh, on 0 to 6 that is basically whatever you score is basically on the basis of how much you're able to logically write right so it is a completely different uh, ball game altogether when it comes to the verbal and quant sections it's more objective so we kind of have a score that is slightly different but they play a very different role in understanding the student psyche so each one of these sections were precisely made to serve the bigger purpose which the admissions committee is looking at so rohan what according to you is a good gre score well to be honest i think when you're looking at a test like the gre uh there's a lot of speculation but if you're looking at what the good schools are are asking for in general the admissions committee look at scores which are competitive and when i say competitive we are looking at anything around a 320 320 plus and as you keep looking at the best schools in the world let's just say the top 30 schools in the world top 40 50 schools in the world you might want to look at somewhere around a 320 5 plus kind of a score So what are the study strategies you will recommend for someone who is aiming for this 320 score at the GRE? Well, uh when it comes to effective study strategies, I would simply say that the entire preparation should be divided into three stages. That's one of the key things that we're supposed to look at. The first stage is of course the foundation where you're supposed to build strong concepts, you should know concepts in and out. The second stage is applying those concepts on different questions 
And then comes the third stage where you're doing a lot of mock tests, which is a testing stage. So people end up jumping onto the testing stage straight away without really doing a lot of work in the foundation stage or in the application stage. So I think one has to understand that before they reach the testing stage, they have to explore all the possible question types and work on the foundation and application stages really well. And then they can get into the testing stage. This, to be honest, I think is the best way to look at your application uh, overall in, in terms of your performance overall. You will improve, but you have to follow these three stages. Also, one important thing is to remember that you should have around two to three hours of study time every day. Are there any specific books or online courses or practice tests or any kind of study material or resources that you recommend to find it most effective for preparation of this test? Okay, so I think when it comes to preparation, you need to start off with something that is the official content and which basically means you should be focusing on the ETS content, which comes in the form of three books. One, the official guide. Then there is a verbal review reasoning book and then there is a quant reasoning review book. So you've got three books that are officially published by the ETS. Once you've finished the ETS books, as in you've covered all the questions in the ETS books, you would have actually understood the real test questions like, like you'd understand what kind of questions really are given on the test. And more importantly, once you're clear with that, you could then go ahead with any resources that you wish to you know, uh, refer to. But also what is important here is that no matter what, as long as your approach is standard and clear, so you cannot keep changing and fluctuating in your approach over and over again. Number of resources so much is not a problem. You could re refer to as many number of resources as you would like to. But having the right approach and sticking to that approach irrespective of which resource you are referring to should be the key here. I mean, if you try too many things and you try too many resources with not a lot of clarity in your approach, you don't really get the kind of results you're looking for. So what I simply think here is that it's important for you to have the right approach, finish the official content, then refer to any any content that you wish to outside that that is available. But uh, don't try too many things with, you know, with respect to the, the study content. So Rohan, what would you say are the most common mistakes that the test takers make during the GRE preparation? And uh, how do you think that they can best avoid this? Okay, so I think to begin with, uh, when it comes to the common mistakes, the students tend to look for too many resources. Okay, so you are actually trying to figure out what is the best resource. There are so many, uh, you know, there's so much information on the internet. So you end up actually looking at too many things. So that in fact confuses you more than actually giving you a solution. Apart from that, I also think to a great extent uh, that when you are actually uh, looking at the videos outside, you know, when you look at other third party videos or videos that are not published by the official sources, you end up actually having a lot of preconceived notions about the verbal section particularly. So you, before you even start your preparation, you got so many questions in mind, you feel the pressure. So chances are that you wouldn't really be very comfortable, uh, you know, and this is one of the, again, common mistakes that people make. Plus, the AWA is something that they take very lightly. They shouldn't do that because it does play a very important role when it comes to good schools. So they shouldn't be really taking that lightly. So that's another mistake people make. So I think all in all and vocabulary is one other area which I sometimes mention as an area where people should be looking at. They make a lot of uh, pres you know presumptions about it. They actually believe that these are the number of words that I should be knowing. But uh, when it comes to the number of words, I think it's beyond that. You've got to look at how relevant those words are when it comes to GRE. But people already have a lot of you know numbers in mind. Like I've got to know 4,000 4, words. I've got to know 5,000 words. But it's not about the number. It's about how relevant it is for the GRE test. That needs to be taken care of. Speaking about mock tests, how important are these mock tests in the GRE preparation? And how should one review them? Okay, so I think uh, obviously mock test is the last stage of your preparation. So when you're looking at mocks, you should remember two things. One that the mocks are supposed to be done in a specific order. You start from the micro and move all the way to macro, which is basically you start with topic-wise tests, 
and then you move to the mixed sectionals and then you move to the full in tests. It needs to be done in this order. Also, the other thing you got to keep in mind with the mocks is how consistently you do it. Right. So you've got to keep in mind that every day you're allotting a specific amount of time right, to actually do a mock and understand how it's working. So when it comes to consistency, it really matters a lot when it comes to mocks. You just can't do it once in a while. And when it comes to analysis, the more tests you write, the more you're able to identify problem areas, whether there is random errors or, or, or if beyond, if there are no random errors, then what are the other specific errors that you're making? Everything should be highlighted when you do your analysis. That's how really mocks play a very crucial role. At the end of it, I think when you're actually ready for the test, you'll be comfortable to do it, especially with uh, the two power preps of the ETS uh, that you get for free. If, if you do those as well, you get to know the actual test to a certain extent. With us today, we have Haifa, our student, who's currently pursuing her BMS and also pursuing her GRE examinations. We will be taking a few queries of hers today on this show. Over to you, Haifa. Hi, sir. Hi, ma'am. Uh, so, I'm preparing for GRE. So, out of many questions that I have, uh, while preparing for GRE, the most important thing is time. So, sir, could you please guide me on how to manage time? Right. So, when it comes to time management, I think you would have probably realized now that you're preparing for it, is that uh, it's the most crucial part of your preparation. But we always tend to look at timing as just a general factor that, okay, we'll probably, you know, find ways to deal with it. But let's get to the core of the problem. The core of the problem is how conceptually strong you are. If you are strong in a specific concept, you know the concept really well. It wouldn't take a lot of time for you to apply that concept. So per question, the amount of time you're spending will automatically go down. Versus if you're not sure about the concepts, you're unable to figure out the, the patterns or tricks you will take a lot of time in making the question familiar to yourself or sort of trying to understand the sense of the question. That is where it takes a lot of your time. So when it comes to time management, I think the key thing is to have a strong hold on your concepts. Also, when you start understanding the concepts and you start solving questions related to the concepts, you've got to ensure that each one of those questions is looked at with this idea of how much will I be you know, sort of spending on this, like how much time will I be spending on this particular question? And I'm going to ensure that I maintain the tempo throughout the test, right? So it starts from one question, but you start building that con confidence as you do more questions, keeping in mind the concepts and the timing, right? So it all needs to be done right at the beginning. And once it's clear in your head, you just need to follow it as it is. Okay, thank you, sir. This is really going to help me a lot. Okay, sir. Uh, so my second question is, how to focus on the balance between verbal and quantitative sections? Okay, so I think I'll be able to answer this question by sort of getting to that main idea, which is to first know what is your strength and weakness. So uh, if you were to look at yourself so far, right, of whatever you prepared, what has been your strength? Has it been verbal or has it been quant? Verbal is my strength and quantitative I'm a little bit weak. Right, so quant has been your weakness so yeah. far. So chances are that you start investing a lot of your time on quant. While verbal is your strength today, you not actually putting in a lot of effort on the verbal section for a, a good amount of time would in fact make that your weakness in the future. It's not right now, but in the future it will. So to strike the balance is important. You, of course, the good thing is you realize where your strengths and weaknesses lie. But now let's just say you're studying for three hours a day, which I normally recommend students to do. I've told you that. So in those three hours, okay, you have to ensure that at least one third of the time needs to go on areas where you're actually good and two thirds of the time can then be invested on your weakness areas. Like in your case, of course, it's, it's, it's the quant section. So in quant section, you will be investing two thirds of your time and for the verbal section, you'll be investing one third of the time. But at the end of the day, you are investing time on both. Therefore, overall your performance right overall if i look at it the verbal and quant will remain in place okay it will remain intact because you just cannot completely go in one direction if you do that the other even if it's a strength way will become a weakness of the future okay thank you sir so for the final question for the evening rohan what is the final piece of advice do you have for the gre test takers who would want to achieve a 320 score and above hmm. okay so i think uh, 
when it comes to a 320 plus kind of a score, every student who wishes to write the GRE wants that kind of a score. But we also have to understand that it's not so unrealistic to begin with because people think, oh, I just need to get a nominal score and get done with it. But we should all be looking at a 320 plus and it's realistic. There are certain things you got to keep in mind. Number one, ensure that you are keeping your study plan in place. There shouldn't be a lot of breaks in your preparation. So I always ensure that all the, all the students are given a specific plan that they are able to follow without any breaks. Also, when I when it comes to you know scoring a 320 plus kind of uh, some somewhere around 320 plus or 325 plus, in fact, uh, the importance of knowing that there is a minimum score that I'm able to achieve in verbal and a minimum score that I'm able to achieve in quant has to be very clearly set in your head. So some people have a verbal score in mind that they're looking for and a quant score that they have that they're looking for. If you follow the basics to the T, chances are you're going to get that required minimum score in verbal, which we normally recommend is somewhere minimum a 155 out of 170. That's like the minimum we expect the students to score. And for quantitative section, we tell the students to have somewhere around a 165 out of 170 kind of a score. So that, to be honest, is where the calculation gets to 320. And both these targets are quite realistic. So simply put, basics followed, right? With a realistic score in mind and to, and to ensure that everything is done with a specific study plan without any breaks, okay? is basically how you'd be able to get to the right score that you're looking for 320 320 plus or even 325 plus but apart from that if you try too many things you're going to probably have a problem with it so that's basically how i would like to keep it keep it simple you know stick to the basics you should be fine thank you with this we come to the end of a very informative session of gre Thank you for watching, stay safe, stay blessed.